Hey everyone, it's Dr. Romani. So, let's talk about expressing needs. Not that it shouldn't be that hard, harder than we think it should be for something so fundamental to being a human being and impossible in a narcissistic relationship. Something that happens to folks in these relationships though is you never know what the healthy version looks like, right? You've been in this sort of, in this distorted universe for so long, you're like, what does healthy look like? What is it supposed to look like when you actually express a need? Let's break that down. Okay, so you're in a narcissistic relationship. You probably are or have been. You're watching this channel and you express a need. You express a want. Maybe you express an opinion. What happens? You drop your thoughts in the comments, but what happens is nine times out of 10, it's rage, gaslighting, manipulation, you're so selfish, eye-rolling, oppositionality, especially if what you're asking inconveniences them in any way. Over time, especially if you grew up with a narcissistic parent, expressing needs is either something you didn't learn, couldn't learn, or you were shamed for, probably all three. And if it happens long enough, this sort of territory of expressing needs becomes really fraught. In my clinical experience, and frankly, also in my personal experience, I have witnessed people who have experienced long-term narcissistic relationships take a variety of, pro of approaches to doing this. Some folks in long-term relationships in particular just stop ever expressing a need and do everything themselves effectively exhausting themselves. Some folks will report feeling nauseous, anxious, and even panicky before they have to ask the narcissist for something. Other people blame themselves and believe the gaslighted BS that they're being sold, that they're being selfish for making a need known. Other folks choose their battles, but they still feel the sting that this person they're in a relationship with will do nothing and then ultimately we'll try to do what the narcissistic person needs sometimes in hopes of at least kind of quid pro quo. That doesn't tend to work all either. It's all quid and no quo. Then there are the deeper fears and feelings that come when you think about expressing a need to a narcissistic person. And these may connect to much more primal and primitive fears. For example, a fear of abandonment a fear of being viewed as spoiled or selfish, a fear of rage and anger. And those fears are enough to hold you back and they're realistic fears. Sometimes, not always, but sometimes. Now, as a psychologist who has worked for years and years with people who have experienced narcissistic abuse, and I've also worked with a lot of narcissistic clients, I know that the folks who are experiencing the narcissistic relationships will apologize about 25 times in my practice if they need to change an appointment with me or ask for a different time where they have an emergency. The narcissistic people I've worked with will tell me, well, can't you just ask another patient to change to the afternoon so it can be at a time I want it to be at? Or my favorite was when I was actually moving my schedule around to make time for an acute call for a client who requested it on a very busy day. And I offered them the only time I could create by moving the other appointments around. And the person, the narcissistic person said, I can't do 10 a.m. That's a little early for me because I like to wake up slowly and I like to take my time meditating with my trainer. Needless as I say, said to him, no call for you, dude. I hope the cardio and the meditation help you figure it out. Or my very fave, is when the narcissistic client would let me know five minutes before the appointment that they can't make it, but that please don't charge me a cancellation because I didn't, I didn't mean to forget to call you. I just forgot. The narcissistic people and their entitlement make them so good at making their twisted needs known or demanded. Frankly, it's not okay, but they're really good at making their needs known. So all of this though begs the question, how do healthy, agreeable, well-regulated people respond when you express a need, a want, or even a thought or belief? 
First of all, a healthy person will hear your need or want non-judgmentally. Now, don't mistake that with the idea that they will always meet your needs. They may not be able to, they may not want to, they may lack the time, they may lack the resource, but they'll hear it. And then secondly, they will not shame what you are asking for. As I said, if they can't meet it, they may respectfully say, oh, I'm so sorry, I can't do that. Or I can't do that. I can do it, but I won't be able to do it until later. They will hear you. They will answer you, but they won't say, I can't do that. Like, what the hell? Healthy people will also sometimes, and in fact, quite often, try to help you work a solution, especially if they can't meet the need. They may offer up suggestions or alternatives. And hold on to your hats, folks. Healthy people may even sometimes make sacrifices if you really need something. For example, you may need a ride to a doctor's appointment that is out, uh, out of the way. And someone may say to you, a healthy person may say to you, sure, I can do that. And I have an errand to run around there that I'll try and get done at the same time. Or they might even say something like, oh, just take my car, just drop me off at work. I'm just going to be sitting there all day. Just get me later. It's not a thing. They'll just do it because it's easy and they just want to do it to be there for you. Healthy people will simply listen. They will just listen to what you want or need and simply having someone not judging you or shutting you down or saying no before you can even complete your sentence actually can often be more important than that other person saying yes to your need. Another thing a healthy person will do is they will not sound like a spoiled teenager. If you ask them something simple, like, can you bring in the trash cans? Can you empty the dishwasher? Can you run that laundry upstairs? They won't become sullen and say things like, you can't make me do that. Or they'll just huff and grump. Healthy people will say, sure. And they'll do it. Or they'll calmly say, give me a minute. I can't do it right now, but I'll absolutely get to it. And they'll actually get to it. Healthy people won't ignore you. Sometimes if the narcissistic person doesn't like what you have to say, they'll just ignore you. And that does not feel good, but it's what they do. And you may repeat it, or you may say it louder, and then they'll get mad and gaslight you. Why are you talking to me like that? A healthy person will listen and respond. For example, that text message you send them, asking them to confirm a date for something, they will actually respond in a timely manner and not make you wait three days like many narcissistic people do and then get mad that you didn't follow up when the thing falls through. I would also file this idea of preferences under wants and sometimes even needs. It may be your preference, for example, for a certain kind of food or maybe a, an intolerance you had for a food like dairy or the noise level of a place you're going to be going for a dinner or a type of movie. As you can imagine in a narcissistic relationship, if you make those preferences known, you'll be painted as fussy, particular, difficult, and demanding. However, if the narcissistic person had any preferences, the world is expected to stop and accommodate. If you make a preference known to a healthy person, they will acknowledge it and do their best to meet it in most cases or let you know if they cannot. For example, and this is a silly example, but a healthy person may say, hey, yo, most of these pizzas have cheese, but I made a smaller one with just veggies. Or at the very least, they might say, I hear you. Let's do our best with this. I'm so sorry if it isn't working. And then we can figure it out. No shaming, no blaming, just trying to land on a solution. Healthy people, above all else, are flexible. You know how people do yoga and Pilates and all kinds of exercises to become more flexible because that's good for your body? Your psyche is no different. More flexible is more healthy, more resilient. You have better coping, better health. But drum roll. Interestingly, which are the most rigid personalities? Those are the narcissistic and the antagonistic folks. And ultimately, the healthy people out there and their psychological flexibility, sadly, are often compelled to bend to the will of the rigid antagonistic and narcissistic folks. 
The narcissist, as a result, almost always get their needs met, and the rest of us don't. And remember, this entire sort of conversation isn't just about voicing your needs, but sometimes it's about being able to voice a thought, a belief, or an opinion. Again, simply not possible in a narcissistic relationship. But in a healthy relationship, even if your beliefs or opinions are different, they will be able to hear you and respectfully say that they disagree. I had something like this happen to me recently. I think I'm generally agreeable. A test told me I was. I know I am. I'm sure there's people out there who might differ on that. And I was talking to a person who was very agreeable, but who had very different opinions than mine. I really don't agree with this person's opinions. I am very fond of them, but I don't agree with them. And I made a little wincy face and I said, I hear you. I can see that what you're talking about is important to you. I don't agree with you. My experience is really different, but I also understand what you believe. It's not always easy when we're in these situations, folks. In this case, her and I felt incredibly different about something, but I breathed and thought about how to respond so I wasn't disrespectful and also didn't just cave and I did express my disagreement. It was healthy on both sides. She did not interrupt me when I shared my point of view. It can happen, but you need two healthy people at the table. If enough key people around you are narcissistic, you simply never get the chance to flex the need expressing muscle or believe that your beliefs are worth sharing or even that your preferences are worth being made known. But perhaps knowing what it can look like, and frankly should look like, can hopefully give you some perspective of where this bar should be set, rather than what, where the bar got set in a narcissistic relationship. And as a reminder, if any of you watching are a therapist, life coach, or therapist in training, I'm launching a program in January of next year, 2024, that will be focusing on how to support clients healing from narcissistic abuse. See the link in the video description. And again, if you're in a narcissistic relationship, you need to build this skill set out. It is like you never learned how to walk, but learning how to express needs, wants, thoughts, beliefs, and preferences, and feeling safe with that, it is a new muscle you have to learn, and in a way, that, imp that important process of building healthy social support is a great place to practice this, to feel it, to do it, and then to recognize that actually, yeah, every time you express a need or a want doesn't mean shame or gaslighting. Some people may even graciously meet them. Good luck with that, and thanks again.